In today's video blog, I want to share a couple of ideas around um, managing your projects better with Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Lists. Now, of course, um, there's various tools out there that can do this. So I'm not saying this is the ultimate tool. I just think for anyone that does have Microsoft slash Office 365 licenses, this is a relatively easy thing to put into place. So let's take a look at the first things I do want to um, just cover with you. Now, a question that I get asked very often is, Trace, should uh, we have one Microsoft team for all the projects and then have a channel for each project? And then, of course, you're going to start running into private channels because some of the projects shouldn't be open to everyone. And I definitely have a couple of thoughts around that. And um, that is that I manage all my projects separately, each in their own teams. Of course, this all depends on how big that project is. If it's a quick couple of hours or a half day or something, I definitely wouldn't spin up a Microsoft team for that. But uh, if there's going to be a team of people working together on a bunch of resources and tools that are used, I would definitely do a separate team per project. I think another reason why I prefer doing separate projects as separate teams, you'll see here, here's a couple of examples, is because you can archive a specific team. Not a channel, not a folder, you can archive a team. So if that project comes to close, I can then archive it and mark it as read only. And then as a PM, for example, I can spin up the project again if I need be, but uh, the members, for example, can leave as well. But I mean, you can still have access to the team. But um, I definitely would consider to do that. So if I wanted to archive a team, I would just go to the settings right there at the bottom. And then I can navigate to that team. So at the end of a project, so let's say Azure Explore, I can then go to that team and say, hey, I want to uh, archive this team. It then asks me, do you want to make the SharePoint site read only as well? Yes. And I can archive it. Now, the team is still available, obviously. It just lies in your um, archive site here. So to get back to it, the easiest would be is to just go back to the settings. And when you go to your active teams, you'll see that right at the bottom, you've got archive teams. So there's your archive teams. So of course, I can just select it again and say, oh, restore this team. Okay, maybe the project is started up again or something. And then the team is actually um, restored. I have to just add it to the top again. So let's quickly go and grab it. So there we go. I'm going to just take that to the top of my teams again. Now, um, again, that is why I do a team per project. Now, something that does happen, though, is um, let's say let's say each of those projects has like 10 members in them. And, um, and collectively, some of you might belong to two of the projects or something. But then you also have a management team that wants insights into the projects, but that don't want to really be part of the noise, because that's the whole point of having teams of people that are responsible for certain things. And then management, of course, works with the exceptions or the summarized data. So instead of adding my management to all the teams, which is not something that I want to do, I would rather do the following. So I would have a project management team. So that's my PMO team. And the managers could belong to that as well as all the PMOs. OK, so in these teams, this is selectively based on the specific project teams. Now, in this PMO team, what I then like doing is because people want to have an overall view of how the projects are going or what's happening. Again, you don't want to be added to all the planners because I believe in using planners, of course. So each of those projects can have its own plan or um, they now call it, uh, let's quickly see, it's got a new name, something about to do's or <laughs> tasks. There we go. Tasks by planner and to do. And um, that then allows me to have specific activities for that project. But again, I don't want my managers to navigate to all the different projects to have to see what's going. So what a person can do, depending if that works for you or not, I think it could be a pretty awesome thing, is that these specific teams are responsible for managing their own projects, of course, and managing their planners and making sure that things are going okie dokie. Now, if I go to the project management team, what I've done is that I've added a Microsoft list. So to do that, I would just click on the tab and I would go, I want to add a Microsoft list. Now, there's various options here. 
I can add something from a template. I can also add um, something from an existing Excel spreadsheet, but I can also build it from scratch. So I actually went and I said that I wanted to build it from scratch. I just went blank list, but you can use various of these uh, templates, of course. So I built a blank list and I then planned the columns I wanted to use. Now it's actually the other way around. Always do your planning first. So I did it in Excel first. I went and planned all the columns that I wanted in that PMO dashboard. And I then came and built the list because then you actually save a lot of time with uh, not going back and fixing things and moving them up and down. So when I built the list, this is what the list ended up looking like. I just want to give you an example. So what I thought would work well is if I had a list where once a month all the PMs goes and adds an update for a project. So once a month they go and add an update. So you'll see that there's various months. So there was um, January and there's February for example. So once a month they can add an update for a specific project. I've got the date of the update so that I can go back to previous ones. I've got the project name which is a choice um, column. I've got the client, which is a choice column. I've got rag status. So all of us are kind of used to rag statuses in projects. I've got a quick scope summary as well. So if someone just wants to see what that project is about, when did the project start? When did it end? Um, what is the project amount, for example? Um, how much has been billed so far? So at the date of the update, how much has been billed? What is the balance? And you could do this for hours as well. So if your projects, if you're more focused on the hours, so it's a 500 hour bucket um, project and you've built 150 hours already, how much is the balance that's left? Then also I added the project manager. So who's the PM um, for that uh, specific project? Who's the project team? So you can very quickly also see who's the project team. And then also if there's an, a team created for that project, I just listed the team name. So project Agile Explore or AI Discovery, etc has also been added. And then I've got a status as well, current, or maybe when a project's finished, you can actually just leave it on the list there and you can just go and change the status for the last update, for example. Now, all of these columns, it was quite easy to actually create them straight from this list here. So I can just go and add column and you'll see that you've got single lines of text, multiple lines of text, locations, numbers, persons, date, groups, etc. I have to warn you though, I do not add the multiple lines of text from this Microsoft list app not happy with it. I actually opened SharePoint and created from there. So, so any of the columns where I wanted multiple lines of text, so for example, the scope summary, I didn't add it from here. I didn't like uh, the way that it applied the JSON formatting to it. So for this specific column, I went to SharePoint and added it there. I'll just quickly show you how that works if you're not used to SharePoint. So this is the Microsoft list. Adding the columns wasn't difficult at all. But um, I actually said open in SharePoint and I then went to the SharePoint list for the multiple lines of text, okay? I didn't like how it was um, displaying it in Microsoft list. So if I go to the list settings, there we go, the settings wheel, list settings. And this is the old way that us old folks used to create um, these little lists in SharePoint, by the way. I then created the multiple line of text from here so that I didn't get formatting in it because otherwise it pulls that column formatting from the Microsoft list, which I didn't like. Okay. While I'm in this view as well or in SharePoint, I also created my views from here. So I also came to the list and I said that I would like a view, for example, where um, I want to show all the projects that has a RAG status that is um, red, for example. So let's try that quickly. So you'll see that there you've got a RAG status called red. So I can go and say list settings. Just a very quick covering of this. I'm going to create a view. I'm going to just copy it from the all items view. It's much easier for me to copy it. Um, I'm going to call this uh, problem projects. <laughs> problem projects. And I'm going to say, um, I want to see items. So I'm going to filter this. I'm going to see items only when the RAG status is equal to red. And you can even further this and say, and um, the, the balance of the billing has gone into a minus, if that makes sense. So they've overbilled already, or I don't know, there's an issue. I'm just uh, giving it as an example. And then I can also sort it because I actually technically only want to see the latest ones at the top. So I'm going to sort this to show update. We've got to just test the theory first in descending order. Let's quickly see if that works. So, yep, must be the other way around. Let's quickly just update this again. Edit current view. It must be ascending. 
So if it still shows previous month, then at least, well, that's not working for some odd reason. Let's quickly think about this. Oh, that's because I'm using groupings, people. So let's quickly edit that. So I'm going to remove the groupings. And then this should work. There we go. It then shows the latest month at the top. So it's going to show only projects that's got a, a red status. So in SharePoint, um, I can actually build a couple of views. You can do that in Teams as well, obviously. So you'll see that I can go create new view straight from here. I still have a bit of a thing about using SharePoint for many of my things. But this is a nice way that you can very quickly then give updates. But that means that the executive or management team doesn't have to sit on all these projects. They don't have to uh, form part of that noise, if that makes sense, and that everyday working stuff that happens. There's a dashboard here that they can very quickly check to see what's happening. Do we have any problems um, jumping out? And maybe people can update this once a week. Depends on uh, how often they want to look at it. And then, of course, also on these list items, you can attach files. So if you are using Microsoft Projects or Projects Online, I don't know how that would work, Projects Online, you can attach the file or the latest project plan or something. Or if you're using Planner in your Teams, you could export the Planner list and attach it um, as an item on, um, on each update so that whoever the manager is can also quickly look at the Planner if they want to see more detailed tasks. So I do think that that can help a lot is to look at this, uh, this PMO dashboard just for a quick view into the projects instead of having to have access to all the planner tasks and all the different teams. Now the last thing that I also want to show you is that um, of course you perhaps have an intranet as well where all your control documents are stored, your forms and templates and policies and procedures, which is not inside of Teams because Teams is my working environment, right? Then you can very easily go and grab the URL for that specific library or page where those templates can be found. And of course, these can be added on the different teams as well to facilitate the group if they're using specific forms or templates for their projects. So you'll see that I just added it as the info hub. And there's my info hub so people can very quickly, and this is coming from a different SharePoint site, if that makes sense. It's coming from my intranet. And this is where they can very, very quickly find any specific um, documents that they need to be able to, uh, to do their jobs, if that makes sense. And then um, a last thing that I want to share about this project dashboard, again, if you don't have all the SharePoint knowledge, okay, is that in this view that I'm in here at the moment, I can click on a column and drag it somewhere else, which means it drags that column in this view um, to a different position, okay? But what if when I go new item, this order is wrong? So maybe you've added a column afterwards that should be the first column. I mean, how do you then change that? So dragging columns here actually just changes the sort order of the content in the view, if that makes sense. But um, to change the form order, the specific order that you see there, the best way to do that is to actually navigate to SharePoint. And if I'm in SharePoint, I'm going to go back to the list settings. So now remember, the views, which is how I look at the content, this is where I change them. So all items or projects, I can then go to there and say, I actually want a specific column to not be the fourth column. I want it to be the first column, for example. But... The order of the fields on the form, this is where you change that. So see that column ordering? Column ordering here specifies for me in which order it lies on the new form. So if I wanted status to be the first column, then this is where I would change it. So this uh, column ordering is what actually changes that uh, the form that it opens. So And that's by going to um, SharePoint for me. I went to SharePoint. So if you want any of these to line a different way, then you can actually just navigate to the SharePoint list and change the column order of the list. I do hope that uh, this uh, project dashboard's given you some ideas on how to manage some things better, and it's just an overview type of thing, of course. It's quite a nice way um, for your PMs to just load a latest update. Maybe you do it once a week. I don't know, it makes sense to maybe do it once a week as well. And they will just upload and update and say, this is the RAG status, this is where we are at the moment. But then each of those projects can have a planner um, list as well um, where they manage the like item level tasks, if, uh, if that makes sense. And this way, the management team doesn't have to have access to all the different planners or all the different teams, and it will give them a nice overview of exactly what's happening in the projects. I hope that helps you, and uh, I hope you have fun.